Good morning students. We are discussing on pavement design and highway construction. Our topic is design of flexible pavement in which in this lecture we will learn on how the stress analysis to be done and how the stress distribution in the pavement layers affect the pavement and how it related to the pavement design that we will learn. So let's start the lecture with the first topic that is stress analysis and that has been done by the Bosnex. So this analysis that particular theory is known as the Bosnex theories. If the subgrade, subbase and surface layers in a pavement are assumed to form a homogeneous mass, the analysis of the stresses can be greatly simplified. In 1885, Bosnesk analyzed the distribution of stresses in an ideal elastic homogeneous and isotropic solid obeying hook slow material and presented an equation for horizontal and vertical stresses in such a material under a particular load. The vertical stress under a load at any horizontal section decreases from the maximum at the point that located directly below or directly beneath the load to zero at a very large distance from this particular point where the load is acting. As here you can see in the figure that a load is acting on this particular stretch. Okay, so beneath this particular thing the load is gradually increasing or if we say from the bottom the load is in gradually decreases at the upper level okay the pressure distribution is shown in the figure as here it is in the bulb shaped the vertical stress at any point below the surface due to a uniformly distributed load on a circular area that point being located on the vertical axis that passing through the center of the circle so for that particular point the value of vertical stresses is notified or is given as a sigma z is equal to p into 1 minus z cube upon a square plus z square raised to 3 by 2. If we talk about the horizontal stresses or we can say the radial stresses, the value of sigma x and sigma y is equal to p by 2 into 1 plus 2 mu minus 2 into 1 plus mu into z upon a square plus z square raised to 1 by 2 plus z cube upon a square plus z square raised to 3 by 2. Here we have talked about the stresses, how the stress and what amount of stress is acting on which direction. The sigma z is nothing but the pressure on that particular surface and the horizontal stresses is from x direction and y direction. If we think this particular thing as a 3D model, we can uh, assume that the vertical stress is from upper side and the radial or we can say the horizontal stress is from the x direction as well as y direction. Okay. So for x and y direction, this is the equation for the radial stresses. Now, as stress occur, there may be the possibility of the displacement. Here, the vertical stresses is much more than the radial stresses. So we can consider the vertical displacement at the surface under the center of the applied load is given by delta is equals to 2 into pa upon e whole multiplied by 
1 minus mu square where mu is the Poisson's ratio if we talk about the terms of stresses that sigma z was the vertical stress on a point on the z-axis same way sigma x and sigma y is equal to radial or the horizontal stresses where the small p that is the applied pressure on particular unit area small a is nothing but the radius of circular loaded plate that here you can see yes okay now z is equals to the depth and as we talk the mu is nothing but the poisson's ratio now the poisson ratio is the ratio of the strain normal to the applied stress to the strain parallel to the applied stress for soils it is generally around 0.5 and if we take this modulus of elasticity of particular soil or we can say the subgrade soil and taking the vertical displacement at the surface at the surface that means the value of depth that z is equal to 0 so for that particular case will get the value of vertical displacement delta as 1.5 into p into a upon e so that you have to remember that the displacement value is delta stresses are sigma z and sigma x and y sigma x is equal to sigma y that we consider as a horizontal stress or a radial stress and sigma z is the vertical stress understood the delta is nothing but the displacement well this displacement formula can be used for design of the pavement by some limiting value of displacement that we have to assume and the deformation of the pavement to a desired value okay so this was all about the Bosinesque theory in this theory you have to remember the value of this three stresses and the displacement one more thing that Bosinesque have given this theory on idealistic things that he has considered uh, the ideal elastic plus homogeneous material plus isotropic solid material which is obeying Hooke's law properly okay and on those material he has applied this theory he has derived this theory okay so after this the next topic that is the Burmester's theory Burmester theory is uh, giving the value that how we analyze the stress the layer by layer in the pavement structure so let's talk on this that Burmester an analysis of a two layer system where the top layer of finite thickness and the bottom layer of semi-finite mass the top layer represent the surfacing base and subbase, whereas the bottom layer is representing the subgrade soil. This must be remembered that the top layer, this is the top layer, okay, that top layer is representing surfacing course, base course, and the subbase course, okay, and the bottom layer, the second layer that we are taking, this is representing only and only subgrade soil for this theory a equation is for the deflection at particular surface that delta is equals to fw whole multiplied by 1.5 p into a upon e2 where delta is the deflection p is equal to load intensity on the circular plate a is equal to radius of the plate e2 that is nothing but the modulus of elasticity for the lower layer okay and fw is displacement factor here we have taken e2 value just because the whole load is coming on that particular layer first even 
that first layer will bear the load but that load would be transferred to the bottom layer and that is the second one so that's why we are taking e2 in the consideration of design here the burmester suggested that the displacement under the wheel load can be limited at 5 mm for the flexible pavement so the permissible displacement is not is 5 mm so let's see an example how we can design the thickness of the flexible pavement by Burmester's two layer theory. Design the thickness of a flexible pavement by Burmester's two layer analysis for a wheel load of 40 kN and a tire pressure of 0.5 mega Newton per meter square. The modulus of elasticity of the pavement material is 150 mega Newton per meter square and that of the subgrade is 30 mega Newton per meter square and for these values we have to design the thickness okay now let's see the solution now radius of the circular area a that we have to find out yes okay so for that we have a formula that tire pressure is equals to wheel load upon pi a square okay we have the tire pressure that is 0.5 mega newton per meter square okay wheel load is also given that is 40 kilo newton and that kilo newton must be converted into the newton so we have taken 14 to 1000 upon pi a square if we simplify this formula then we will get the value of a as a 15.96 centimeter that is nearly equal to the 16 centimeter okay so our pavement thickness was six would be 16 centimeter now let's select a thickness of top layer of pavement that we have to select okay here we have taken that value as a 2 into a okay if we take 2a then the thickness of the top layer would be 32 cm this is just we selected it's not necessary that you have to select 2a value you can also select 1.5a or also you can select 3a but here you can see in the 3a the whole curve will get at some of the constant value so generally we take 1.5a or 2a if the select whether the selected value is right or wrong that depends the second iteration okay so here i have taken that i have selected 2a value okay so for the, that 2a value the thickness of top layer that is 32 centimeter now we'll take the ratio of e1 and e2 that is also given that 150 and 30 mega newton per meter square and that ratio will be 5 now all in all we need the value of displacement factor that is fw okay so to find out this fw value we have selected a thickness of top layer as well as we have calculated the ratio of e1 and e2 because from this graph we can find out the displacement factor and for that we need these two values okay so from the graph here we have e1 and e2 value is uh, 5 okay so here the curve of 5 yes now we have selected 2a as a thickness of top layer so 2a and this 5 graph are intersecting at this point and this point is indicating some value of displacement factor that i am taking as a point 50, point 0.43 okay now we have the value of fw that is 0.43 we have the value of p that is tire pressure that is 0.5 mega newton per meter square okay that we have converted into newton per meter square into we have the value of a that is in 16 centimeter that we have to convert in meter value okay and upon e2 e2 is 30 mega newton per meter square 
after substituting all this value we will get the value of the deflection and that is 0.00172 meter we will convert it into centimeter okay that is 0.172 centimeter as earlier we have discussed that as per the Burmester's theory the allowable stress is 5 millimeter that is the 0.5 centimeter and here we are getting the value is 0.172 centimeter okay so our design is safe so we can consider the thickness of top layer as a 2a value okay that's how we can design the thickness of flexible pavement the next topic that is the Burmester's three layer theory previous one was Burmester's two layer theory now what this three layer theory states the three layer system can be convinced as the top layer that representing all the bituminous layers taken together bituminous layer that means wearing course and surface course okay second layer that representing the unbound road base and its base course and the final one that third layer is representing the subgrade the materials in the three layers are assumed to be elastic and their mechanical property is characterized by the modulus of elasticity in simpler treatment the loading is assumed to be uniformly distributed over this circular contact plate the more commonly evaluated quantities are for the vertical compressive com the vertical compressive strains and stresses that reaching the top of the layers representing the subgrade and unbound layers next is the horizontal and vertical stresses at the bottom of the unbound granular layer and the third the horizontal tensile strain at the bottom of the bituminous bound layer and the last is the surface deflection so these four are the commonly evaluated quantities from this particular theory for design of pavements value of modulus of elasticity are needed and they can be determined from laboratory test we have a rough formula that we are generally using for determining the value of modulus of elasticity and that value is based on the CBR value. The formula is E is equal to 10 into CBR. Whatever the value of CBR you can get of that particular material that multiplied by 10 will give you the modulus of elasticity for that material. If we talk about the procedure of pavement analysis, the first step is determining the wheel load and the contact pressure next the selection of a pavement with the top layer of thickness h and the bottom layer of the granular base of h2 value next is evaluating the modulus of elasticity for all three layers and calculating the vertical and horizontal stresses as well as the strain at two different interfaces from the standard tables then we comparing the stresses and the strain with allowable values for the materials that we are selecting and we are making some adjustment also if we found necessity okay so this is how the burmester theory works with this i am concluding this lecture i hope student you get at the concept of stress analysis and the stress distribution in pavement layers. We'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.